Hey guys, what's going on? John here from What's Spinning. Here tonight to chat about this new Animal Collective EP, Bridge to Quiet. Animal Collective famed neo-psychedelia, freak folk, psychedelic pop band. They've been at it for years and for many of them have been a band that's been near and dear to my heart. Between Fields and Sung Tongs and Meriwether Post Pavilion as well as Strawberry Jam, Animal Collective for years was really pushing me to listen to the stranger side of music and into some weirder things and honestly they've become some of my most cherished albums of all time. The influence that Animal Collective back in the day had had on me is still being felt by myself today. Now in the last couple of years it's been very hard for me to be an Animal Collective fan between a lot of failed solo projects like both Panda Bear and Amy Tear put out last year. But on top of that Animal Collective as a whole have been putting out some pretty awful stuff. Painting With while I love parts of it is very synth heavy and not nearly as creative as what they were doing for years. And I still am trying to wrap my head around what they were thinking recording Tangerine Reef, trust me, it's not that good at all. However, out of nowhere, we have a nice new EP, Bridge to Quiet. Let's chat about this thing. This album starts off with Rain and Cups. It's a very peaceful, very aquatic sounding intro, and you know, it sounds ridiculous to say that, but if you know Animal Collective, it's something that they've kind of perfected over the last couple of years. But it does build nicely with some hazy vocals, or should I say hazy everything, because this track is a psychedelic feast. Man, I love that low-keyed, lumbering beat that rolls its way slowly into the background. That's really cool. And between that and these very woozy vocals we get, man, this track is a vibe. It's fascinating because it's such a low-key, laid-back track, but it is wonderfully textured, and it just has so much going on. So much so that when we get this release of a chorus with Suddenly the Rain is Gone Again, it is immensely like this track is a wonderful return to form. As a matter of fact, most of this EP is just that. Piggy Nose, on the other hand, right off the bat, is hazier and weirder. But their approach to ambient sounds on this track is fascinating. It's a track that if you sit with, the results are immense. And you know what? By the time it builds up to this just mishmash of synths, it's actually pretty exciting, too. Now, I will say this. This is the first time in a long time that I've had to sit with an Animal Collective track for like six or seven minutes. It's actually pretty challenging, especially because they took a turn for the much more accessible for many years. But the way that this groove eventually works its way in, fits in place along this big catchy hook, it honestly is just really likable. It takes me back to a simpler time with Animal Collective. I'll be honest, this might just be me, but it makes me feel just nostalgic. I don't think it's all nostalgia though. I think this is a nice updated sound. And you know what? No, it's not as state of the arc or as exciting or groundbreaking sounding as it once was. But if you ask me, if this is the direction that Animal Collective are going back in slowly, we could be on the verge of something special. Not to mention that last minute that we get here is absolutely euphoric. Subier Passage, on the other hand, is the most experimental and far out track here. This track has a ton of sound play and really works great with some ambient sounds as well. But interestingly enough, while it's very meditative, you really have to sit with it. It's also very playful at points as well, which once again is something that I genuinely loved about Animal Collective back in the day. I mean, to be perfectly honest, there are some moments on this track that I feel like are a little too much, maybe drawn out a little too much, could be used with a switch up. But you know what? Eventually Animal Collective even rectify that by adding in some vocals just enough. But still, I'll take this track alone over anything on Tangerine Reef any day. And Bridge to Quiet as an outro is really fascinating as well. I mean, honestly, from the intro to this track, it sounds like one of the noisier tracks here, but it becomes one of the most accessible here, if you want to call it that. Like truly great Animal Collective products, you do have to sit with this still. But between the gloomy, meditative beat here and the very hard to place vocals, this track is a knockout. In a weird way, I feel like this is the kind of sound I wish they went with on Tangerine Reef. And it just has enough catchy hooks just sprinkled in there so that it's just not some wonky experiment and actually sticks with you. It genuinely gives me a lot of the same feelings that I had when I first discovered Animal Collective years ago. Uh, this EP rules, and now if you'll excuse me, I have to go back and fall in love with this band's catalog all over again. So while, yeah, it's been hard to be a fan of Animal Collective for many years now, I feel like with this new EP, they're falling back in love with their sound again, and so am I. The material 
material on this EP actually makes you sit and think about what you're listening to, but boasts unbelievable reward. And you know what? Yeah, it's a lot to take in. And personally, because of what I've seen from Animal Collective in the last couple of years, that takes some getting used to. But for the first time in a few years, I'm genuinely very happy to be an Animal Collective fan. I'm feeling a light eight on this EP, but let me know what you guys think down below. If you like the video, be sure to give us a like, give us a subscribe, and let me know down below what you would like for me to chat about in the future. And until next time, have a great day, guys.